Sage Wanderer here, and welcome to Coffee Talk! <laughs> All right, so it's been a while since I've done a Coffee Talk, so I'll clarify what a Coffee Talk is. Coffee Talks are videos where the subject is something I find interesting, but I don't necessarily believe in. And I need a little coffee to swallow it, you know what I mean? <laughs> I need something to chase it down with because I don't quite I don't quite swallow it all. Ah, all right, okay. Hang on, I gotta fix my my do rag here. I gotta get my little thing centered up there so I look all symmetrical. <laughs> okay, so uh, today, please, no problems. I'm trying to quit. I'm I'm trying to quit problems completely. Ah, all right, so today we're talking about the Chinese invasion of America. Don't, don't, don't. Now, we'll start with what I absolutely do believe. No coffee needed for this. I do believe that there is a plan coming from China to eventually invade America. <laughs> Americans have a four year plan if we're lucky, right? What's your plan for America? We might ask our presidential candidates who are going to be there for four, maybe eight years if they're lucky. We take it four chunks, four years at a, at a bite, right? So, um, uh, uh, the Chinese, on the other hand, uh, yeah, these guys, they have a 150 year plan. They have a two year, 200 year plan. You know, they have a five, they have a 5,000 year plan. I mean, they are out planning us. So somewhere in all that planning, I am quite sure there is a bona fide plan, if not several plans, for their intentional takeover of the United States of America because it's obvious and clear from what they say, from what they do, and how they act that the Communist Chinese Party intends to take over the world. Don't, don't, don't. Uh, what are we going to do tonight, brain? We have the same thing we do every night, Pinky. We're going to try and take over the world. Pinky and the brain. Pinky and the brain. Sorry. I don't want to get into copyright infringements, especially from Garfield. So anyway, um, yeah, the Chinese intend to uh, invade America. Um, but at what point uh, can we expect that visit? And how is the method, you know, what are they trying to do? So that I don't need I don't need any coffee to swallow the idea that the Chinese want to invade the United States. The question is, is that what's happening right now? Is is the way that the Chinese are handling our country and our people and our president is it exactly according to their plans? Is this all according to their plans or is it more random than that? And how much control if any do we have over their plan? <laughs> so what we're talking about is an invasion. So what I usually do with Coffee Talks is I just proceed as if though I believe all of it, understanding that, you know, I don't really necessarily believe all of it. Some of it, yeah, sure. Some of it, probably not. Some of this, um, the story I'm about to weave for Coffee Talk, <laughs> some of it comes from Q. I won't lie there that, you know, this is uh, that Q was talking about Chinese invasion, apparently. Of course, you never can tell. The guy only asks questions. He never gives you any answers. What's up with that? Um, that's kind of what Jesus did. He always answered a question with a question. But uh, anyway, so yeah, Q, I'm not saying Q is Jesus or anything. I'm not a Q guy. You know that, right? You think you know that I think it's a psyop, and, and obviously it's being used by the enemy right now against us. And uh, they took the one thing that I do believe is probably true, that there is an international child sex trafficking and blackmail ring that every government and every major corporation and all the rich people are all involved in in one way or another by hook or by crook. At least they all know about it. And they're all lying about it and covering it up because it's, it's awful. It's horrible. It's a terrible thing. It's their dark secret. <clears throat> and the public is, uh, the press, the, I've started, started calling them the propaganda stream for the Democratic Party has taken control of this as a way of trying to discredit us uh, on the on the right, the Patriot side, um, which I was afraid would happen with Q because some of the stuff he says is pretty out there. 
But some of this uh, coffee talk theory that I'm going to throw at you today is probably derived in some way from some of the talk uh, surrounding the Q movement of researchers. But at the same time, it's also uh, going to be based in what I see. It's going to be based in the news. It's going to be based in facts. It's going to be based in also conjecture, or it's going to be uh, affected by conjecture. Because it's a coffee talk, and that's what coffee talk is all about, going, what if, what does this mean, and can we tie all these pieces together? So let's get down to it, all right? Now, if I was going to invade the United States, I certainly wouldn't do it militarily. We have nuclear weapons, we have high-tech fighter jets, we have the highest trained and most advanced military on the face of the planet. No, I would much rather attack a wounded dying, bleeding, and uh, crippled America. And so I would set out, if I were a Chinese uh, dictator trying to take over the world, <clears throat> I would definitely need to take America out first. I mean, really, before you can do much else, you've got to cripple the guard dog of, you know, the we used to be called the police force for, uh, you know, the world. And so we don't have a problem historically and pressing our will upon other countries, and we often stick our nose where, well, I won't say it doesn't belong. A lot of times it doesn't belong there, but sometimes we have to do what we have to do, right, for national security and to help the oppressed. Now, having said that, um, they really can't advance on their plan of global domination, <laughs> global domination, until they get rid of America, right? I mean, that's just logical. So the best way to get rid of America is to implode it, you know. And who knows whether back in the day, oh, what was the guy's name? Oh, I've got this. I hate it when I have when I draw a blank. But um, he was the guy that did the the, uh, and that's the rest. Link Art Linkletter is that Art Linkletter? No, it's a different guy. I don't know. You'll the comment section now will be filled with the name of this person. <laughs> But he used to tell the rest of the story. And he did a little monologue called What If I Was the Devil? And whether he got that from the Chinese or the Chinese got that from him, the communist infiltrators that are trying to take down the United States have definitely, in my opinion, used that playbook, which is to basically destroy the family, um, uh, sow division in the country, um, emphasize racial and economic differences and cause a, a, a race slash economic uh, civil war in the country. And uh, the goal being to hopefully remove all of the rifles from all the battle rifles from the hands of the people of the United States because the reason the Japanese did not attempt an invasion on the United States is because they said, and I quote, there, is a, there would be a rifle behind every blade of grass. So they were afraid of the militia of the United States, with the militia being every able-bodied uh, man and woman who can carry a rifle. And so disarmament would definitely be part of the, uh, you know, the ultimate plan to take over the world. So what we might say is that they're behind, one could argue that China ha is the only one with the clear motivation to bring the chaos and disunity to America that we have seen lately and that we may all be being played. We, it's a coffee talk, but I think there's a better than even chance we're being played by the Chinese, right? And they're manipulating us into fighting one another. How would you do that? Well, like the uh, Paul Harvey. That's the guy's name. Everybody's going, geez, you're killing me, Sage. Paul Harvey, not Art Linklater. Art Linklater did the kids say the darndest things and Sorry, Cosby, too. I think he did that one as well. But um, no, the uh, rest of the story is... Anyway, I've already forgot his name again. <laughs> it's morning. That's why I need the coffee. But yeah, they, uh, they would go into the universities and uh, get the brainwashing started in the school system. You know, have communists infiltrate the universities, train the next generation of teachers who then take that to the smaller and smaller and younger and younger children until your car, uh, till your uh, kindergarten teacher is a bona fide Marxist, right? A bona fide communist who wants to see the Communist Party invade the United States and they want to see the destruction of the United States due to their, their uh, brainwashing that occurred at the university and now they're imprinting that on your kids. And then you end up with a whole generation of Antifa, right? 
a whole generation that hates our country, that hates America, that wants to see the whole system torn down. This is how you eventually invade the United States. And then Red Dawn, the way that the Russians in the fictional movie uh, from the 80s, Red Dawn, split the United States in half. And the way that the troop movements were described in the scene around the fireplace with the glass of whiskey and the, uh, and the airman, the pilot, I believe he was a Marine pilot or Navy pilot that was shot down and they rescued him, you know, if you recall the story of Red Dawn. And he was telling them how the war was prosecuted. He was saying how the, how the uh, Russians were able to break our defenses, working with the... And in, his, in his telling, the Chinese came in on our side. And I think now, if anything, with Coffee Talk being the point here, if anything, that's flipped. And China is our enemy, and Russia might throw themselves into the fire to, uh, to prevent the United States from being destroyed by the Chinese. Because the Russians don't have a chance at beating the Chinese. If the, Russian, if the Chinese beat the United States, then Russia's next and they know it. So it makes sense. And this is back to the Tidor timeline, if you all follow the channel. But uh, Tidor kind of said the same thing. That China takes out America, tries to, take, tries to take out America from the inside out. And before it can establish itself and take over the government of the United States officially, the big cities get nuked by, uh, by Russia. Don't, don't, don't. So if the Chinese were to invade the United States, first they would want to weaken the United States. They would want to catch the United States in as close to a full-blown civil war and division that they can get. <clears throat> One side being obviously covertly on the side of the Chinese and the other side being pro-American forces. Uh, basically turning half of our population into communist turncoats. That would be the goal. I mean, if I were trying to take over the world and I were a communist Chinese instigator. Uh, so once you get that, basically destroying the United States from the inside out, and you have a breakdown in the strength and capacity of the United States, and they're completely distracted, that's when your side, who you've already bought out, that's the thing. The other part of this plan, while you're destroying the family, while you're taking down the church, while you're reprogramming the children to be communists while you're infiltrating every uh, government uh, position, you're infiltrating every uh, religious institution, every university. You've got people in every major corporation. Uh, in some cases, I believe that the Chinese have actually co-opted members of Congress, senators, um, owners of major corporations, Institutions like um, the NFL, the NBA, and uh, all of the major news networks, okay? Uh, all of these are in some way owned or controlled or under the blackmail control of the Chinese. And so it stands to reason that you would go through and buy up a lot of key properties like ports, uh, warehouses along ports, shipyards, things like that. And anybody who's been watching knows that the Chinese own a big chunk of the shipyards in the California ports. And I haven't heard this about Portland, but it wouldn't surprise me if the same is true in Portland and Seattle. So they can just invade their troops, bring them right in under the cover and bring in weaponry, bring in heavy weaponry, especially if they have the governors and the turncoat communists in, in government and in corporations working with them at the port level and covering for them, then they could easily bring in uh, large mechanized troop carriers, helicopters, all kinds of foreign armor, you know, and, uh, and weapons and troops to then bolster the secession movement of Oregon, California, and Washington state. Now this, this uh, differs from the Red Dawn scenario, but here's where the Red Dawn scenario is spot on. And that's with what's going on in Mexico and Canada. Don't, don't, don't. Right now, what's actually for real is going on. No coffee needed for this portion. I understand from people on the ground that are reporting to me from both Mexico and Canada that there are Mexican, I mean, there are, excuse me, Chinese troops in Mexico. They bought their way in with the help of the drug cartels. The drug cartels became very uh, starved for income when the um, 
when the legalized marijuana movement, uh, especially started in Colorado, and it displaced all of the money that they were making from illegal Mexican-grown weed being brought up over the border, which was a poor quality, and people called it dirt weed, and then they started growing like premium cannabis, you know, hydroponically out of Denver and shipping it all over the country illegally, you know, but through the legal growing methods there that were, and, the, and the infrastructure. And that started happening through all of the legalized states until there is no more underground Mexican marijuana really in America anymore. And that was the bread and butter that ran the drug cartels and that caused the drug cartels to turn on their own people. And that's where a lot of these wars and the fighting with this with the government in Mexico and whole towns having to defend themselves against armored columns of uh, of you know armored personnel carrying cartel members wielding AK forty sevens and the thing is they're getting their weapons from China too presumably and so the Chinese just bought their way in you know the cartels needed the money and so they took the Chinese money and now there are troops in secret camps established in Mexico. And I'm hearing from someone in, that I personally know up in Canada who says there are Chinese troops here under the blue hat of the United Nations and they're amassing along the border waiting for election day. Don't, don't, don't. What you have here is the perfect storm and we were all asleep. We were asleep watching American Idol. We were asleep watching, um, gosh, I don't even watch enough TV to tell you what all y'all were watching. I was watching America burn down slowly and reporting on, on the internet for the last several years, but most of America has been sound asleep while this has been going on. So is China about to roll tanks into California, Texas, Arizona, New Mexico? Are they about to roll tanks into Seattle, right? Detroit? Presumably Chicago, possibly. Are these city-states going to start to secede from the Union and side with the Chinese government? Because they're already bought and paid for? Is that what is behind our election? Is Biden's involvement with Hunter and the Chinese uh, businesses that are all state-owned, is that tied into Apple now being headquartered in China? And Members of our own American basketball teams happen to come out and apologize for anti-Chinese statements they made because their bosses at the NBA told them so. They told them they better do it if they want to keep their job because now you work for the Chinese government. That, you know, the device that you're talking to me on, was, or listening to me on rather, or watching me, is probably made in China. We funded them. We paid for all of our own. We paid for our own destruction by buying cheap Chinese goods and by letting our leaders take us down the primrose path. And um, while well, they lined their pockets and sold America out to the Chinese. And then here comes Donald Trump, the accidental president. Or was he brought in, don't, 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 by certain white hats to save the United States from a Chinese takeover? You can't make this stuff up. Or can you? Well, as you can see, I'm out of coffee, so I'll just tell you like it is. I'm inclined to believe about 90% of what I just told you, and I may, I may be wrong about the other 10%. But I will tell you this, I'm absolutely convinced, 100% sure, that China has a plan to destroy America, because they have a plan to destroy everyone, because they want to take over the world, and they're not uh, bashful about saying it. The Chinese Communist Party are... Um, they're elitist. They believe that their ideas, that they're that they're almost destined by some kind of sense of destiny that doesn't seem to be tied to God, but tied to their own momentum as a movement. And they believe almost a manifest destiny right to rule the world. And they'll tell you that, that it's their time. Well, didn't major American publications announce in 2019 that the, in 2020 would be the, uh, or about 10 years ago, announced by 2020 that the primary uh, force in the world would be China. It's the Chinese century, they called it. Yeah. When Hillary brought him out the button, the, the reset button. Yeah, that was that was the button that uh, started the anti-American destruction of our country. <laughs> Hillary started it when she hit that reset button with the Chinese a few years back. 
So um, they started this in the 70s, 80s. By the 90s, it was well underway. We've been infiltrated. We've been taken over. We've been purchased. And our leaders are on their side. Except for one, it appears, and a handful of senators and a handful of congressmen and the rest of the people who still have a rifle behind every blade of grass. What do you think? Could we withstand the Chinese? Are they trying to take us down? Is a civil war really just World War III in disguise? Are we being played by the communist Chinese? Or is this all just a fantasy better suited for a coffee talk? All right, you let me know. And I got one thing to say. God save our republic.